Hey everyone, um, I'm just excited to share with you today because this past Sunday we started a new series called Road Trip, The Great Adventure. And you know, I think it's just going to be a great series. I'm really excited about it. Uh, we started off with week one and we talked about uh, restoration. And throughout this series, we're going to be using a, what we're going to do is a modern day parable. You know, Jesus taught with parables and used the, the things of that day. But we're going to look at cars uh, for today and see how we can glean some, some life lessons out of that and biblical teachings that can make a difference in our lives. So when we talked about this idea of restoration, we put up a, a, a photo of a Pontiac GTO and it was beaten up. I mean, it looked like this thing hadn't been driven in, in 30 years and it was rusty and just to my eyes anyways, when I saw that, I was like, that's a piece of junk. And that's what I saw. Um, but then we put up another image of that same exact car that had been restored and it was absolutely beautiful. And one of the things that I challenged us with is what do we see? You know, when we look at people's lives, what do we see? And uh, that car to, to someone who, who's a professional uh, <laughs> car restorer, for lack of a better word, uh, that person sees potential, that person sees beauty, that person sees purpose. And, and looks beyond the exterior and says, you know what, I'm gonna give it that attention that it needs and then it's gonna fulfill its purpose once again and it will be beautiful and it will get a family from here to there. And, um, and, and so it takes something that looks terrible and restores it into its beauty, into its original intention. And I wanted to challenge people with that idea that no matter where we're at in that spectrum, whether we feel like a piece of junk or we're doing really well, God's in the restoration business. And so um, I wanted to challenge us to look at the story of, of Zacchaeus because I feel like he was a good representation of all of our lives and the, the challenges that, that we get played into in this world. So uh, for example, Zacchaeus, it says in scripture that he was a short man, uh, he had become a tax collector and he was wealthy. And I, I was, you know, so putting my own thoughts on this, but I was thinking like as a kid, being short, uh, that he got picked on. And as a result of that, he kind of developed an attitude and, and, and maybe some anger and resentment and bitterness. And I think he was a bit of a loner. And because for him to go into being a tax collector, these people were looked down upon and they, they kind of abused and took advantage of the people that they collected taxes from back in that day. And so, but the scripture says he was wealthy. And I was thinking about that and I was thinking, he's the picture of the old car though. You know, because on the outside, he, he kind of like, um, well, I guess I could say it in a different way, but on the outside, he looked like he had it together, right? Where he had a good job and he was making money and he was wealthy. But I feel like his insides looked at that old image of that Pontiac GTO that we showed and it looked de decrepit and old and lost its purpose and vision and it needed to be restored. And so as, as Zacchaeus grew up now, there's this time when he wanted, Jesus was teaching and he wanted to see what Jesus was all about. So he ran ahead of the crowds and got through it and he climbed a tree because he was short, he couldn't see. And he got, his, got Jesus' attention and he called out his name and Jesus went to him, he said, I wanna go to your house, Zacchaeus, and I wanna spend time with you. And in that moment, when he found Jesus, his heart was softened, the inside, right? Any change is gonna start from the inside out, just like restoring a car. And when he met Jesus, you could see that he changed because he said that um, he wanted to give away half of his possessions to the poor, and he also wanted to pay back four times the amount he had cheated people. And that's what Jesus does. When you allow Jesus to come into your life, there's got to be a change that occurs because we're broken inside. We're, we're needy inside. We're loners inside. We, we want to be accepted. We want to be loved just like Zacchaeus. And we, when we open up the door of our hearts and we allow God to do his work of restoration, then the change comes about. And that idea of giving away um, his money to the poor, half of his, of his possessions. I'm thinking about like us to say, who of us would give away half of our possessions to the poor? Not many. But here was a broken man who had his life radically changed by Jesus Christ. And then as a result of that, he saw the need, he saw the kingdom. He had a new reason 
to live this life with intention. And God brought him back to the very place of how he was originally designed as an image bearer of God's beauty, an image bearer of taking care of the poor and upholding justice. And, and now he had a new lease on life. And that's what God wants to do in each and every one of us. And that's our role as the church, you as an individual who follows Christ. When you see a need, you see someone who has that, that, that need to be restored, right? They look like a broken down car. You invest in their lives. You go out of your way to look at them because you want to see with the eyes of Christ and see that there's hope, there's purpose, there's mission. And if you will help introduce them and point them to the person of Jesus Christ, their heart could be healed from the inside out and then they could live the rest of their life with the best possible way to live it. And that's by kingdom values to make a difference with the one life that they've been given. And so I want to challenge you, if you, you haven't been at church, to listen to the message, to come these, up few, these next few weeks and, and let's learn together um, about this great adventure that God has for us. And I encourage you and invite you to go on this road trip with us. I look forward to it. We'll see you then.